Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle. This is Michelle Reads YA, and today I am giving you a small fall book haul. That all rhymed. That was great. I have been in a reading slump, which has actually helped my book buying. <laughs> so since I've been in a slump, I haven't been buying a lot of books because I haven't been wanting to read many books. So I only have a few books to show you for this haul, but I just want to get them out and put them on my shelf. So I wanted to show them to you. The first book that I got, I got from Amazon because it was $7. And that is Ivy Aberdeen's Letter to the World by Ashley Herring Blake. I read Girl May of Stars by Ashley Herring Blake and absolutely loved it. I know that this is middle grade, which, which is not usually my thing, but it's queer. So that is When a Tornado Rips Through Town, 12 year old Ivy Aberdeen's house is destroyed and her family of six is displaced. Ivy feels invisible and ignored in the aftermath of the storm. And what's worse, her notebook filled with secret drawings of girls holding hands has gone missing. I have heard such good things about this, especially from Chelsea from Chelsea Dowling Reads, so I think I'm really gonna like this one. The next book that I got was my most anticipated book of the second half of the year, and that is Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas. I am so excited I got this. I wish I had gotten the Barnes & Noble edition because the inside hardcover of that is amazing. I just got this little guy, but oh, I'm so upset. Next time I got, just get the Barnes & Noble one. Okay. When his traditional Latinx family has problems accepting his gender, gender, Yadriel becomes determined to prove himself a real brujo. With the help of his cousins and breast, best friend Mar Maritza, he performs the quince's ritual himself and then sets out to find the ghost of his murdered cousin Miguel and set it free. So I know this is about a trans boy who is having difficulty with his family and then brings a ghost to life and I have heard such amazing things about this. He hit the New York Times bestseller list and it was the first transgender person to make the list. So I'm very proud of this author. I cannot wait to read this. I have tried to have my book club read it for next year so we'll see. I just I'm so excited for this. The next two books my husband got me because he's very nice and yeah, and the first one is Bloom by Kevin Panetta and Savannah Ganochu. I know that this is a graphic novel, and I'm really getting into graphic novels, especially I believe this is queer graphic novel, so very excited about this. I love the artwork already. I just flipped through as in all blue tones, so I'm very excited for this. Thank you, Kasman, for this one. He also got me Nosferatu. I think that's how you say it. If not, I just sound stupid, but honestly, what else is new? This is how my channel goes. I have not read anything by Joe Hill except for the Lock and Key graphic novels, but if he's anything like his father Stephen King, I think I'm really gonna like his books. I have almost all of them on my shelves and this one was on my wish list, so yeah. Victoria McQueen has uncanny knack for finding things. A misplaced bracelet, a missing photograph, answers to unanswerable questions. When she rides her bicycle over a rickety old covered bridge in the woods near her house, she always emerges in the places she needs to be. Charles Talent Mac Man Manx Manx has a gift of his own. He likes to take children for rides in his 1938 Rolls Royce Wraith with the vanity plate Nosferatu. In the Wraith, he and his innocent guests can slip out of the everyday world and in onto hidden roads that lead to an astonishing playground of amusements he calls Christmas Land. The journey across the highway of Charlie's twisted imagination transforms his precious passengers, leaving them terrifying and unstoppable as their benefactor. I know that this was turned into a series on AMC. It tells me right here, AMC. So I would like to read this before I get into the series. So we will see. The next one that I got because I was seeing uh, movie trailers for this and I remember looking at the original hardback cover and really liking the cover and then when I saw the movie trailer I liked the trailer so anyway I got this. Words on Bathroom Walls by Julia Walton. Um, I Hold on. Adam is a pretty regular teen. He's just navigating high school while living with paranoid schizophrenia. His hallucinations include a cast of characters that range from the good to the bad to the just plain weird. Luckily, an experimental drug promises to help hide his illness from the world. So I really like books about mental illness. 
that give mental illness the right portrayal. So hopefully this is one of them. I know that Emma from Emma Books read this a couple years ago and she really liked it. So hopefully it holds up from when she read it a couple years ago. The next book that I got is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. I hadn't really heard of this. I was on book Twitter and almost all of my mutuals were talking about this book and I was like, okay, so I got this. I still don't know anything about it. Linus Baker is a by-the-book caseworker in the apartment of charge of the magical youth. At 40, he lives in a tiny house with a devious cat and his old records for company, but his quiet life is about to change. Linus is summoned by extremely upper management and given a curious and highly classified assignment. Travel to an orphanage on a distant island and determine whether six dangerous magical children are so dangerous, in fact, that they're likely to bring about the end of days. So this sounds cool. I know it's a little bit of magical realism and fantasy, which is hit or miss for me, so we'll see. The next one I got, I, I have no idea why. I believe it's being turned into a TV series and everybody on book Twitter was hype. So I was like, I would like to be hype as well. And that's Jade City by Fonda Lee. It is fantasy. So, who knows? For centuries, honorable greenbone warriors have used magical jade to enhance their abilities and defend the island of Kikon from foreign invasion. Now the war is over and a new generation vies for control of Kikon's bustling capital city. Four siblings of the powerful Kull family must prepare for battle, and the fragile peace between the clans is about to break. I know this is a trilogy. I know people are really, really liking this. <laughs> Fantasy is not my jam. Once again, don't know why I got this, so we'll see. The next book I got is because of Chelsea from Chelsea Dowling Reads on Goodreads said that this book, I think she DNF'd it because it was too heavy for her and I knew right away that I was probably really gonna like it because I like heavy contemporary. And that is Little Universes by Heather Demetrios. I have never read this author but I have a couple of her books on my bookshelf. So I'm hoping you'll like it. This is a huge contemporary which is awesome. I love this cover. It just sounds right up my alley. When a tsunami strikes the island, their parents are vacationing on the Malaysia, on in Malaysia. It soon becomes clear to the sisters that their parents are never coming home. Forced to move from their sunny California home to Boston for the rest of their senior year, each girl struggles with secrets their parents' death has brought to light and with uncertainty about the future. Instead of bringing them closer, it feels like the wave has torn them apart. So, sounds super heavy. And I think that's why Chelsea either didn't like it or DNF'd it, but for me, I like heavy contemporary. This sounds right up my alley. I'm super excited to read this. The next two books I got at Barnes Noble. I went with my friend Alex and I haven't been Barnes Noble in a while, so I got some books. Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. I read Final Girls by Riley Sager and really, really liked it. And I am not one for like mystery thriller. So I, I just know that like all of his books people really, really like. So this one had come back in paperback. So it was cheaper. I was all about that. Her Dream Apartment, Her Worst Nightmare. After responding to a mysterious newspaper advertisement, Jules Larson gets a job as an apartment sitter at the Bartho Bartholomew, one of Manhattan's most famous and secretive buildings. At first, the extravagance of the Barth Bartholomew feels like a lucky break for recently heartbroken and penniless Jules, who has been haunted by misfortune for most of her life. But when a fellow apartment sitter in the building goes missing, Jules begins to suspect there are dark forces at the work behind the Bartho Bartholomew's <laughs> glamorous facade. Digging deeper into the building's past, Jules soon realizes that the Bartholomew is more dangerous than she thought, and the escape may be impossible. So I'm really excited for this one. It's pretty short for an adult mystery. Um, very excited. Really like Final Girls. Hoping I like this one as well. The next book I got at Barnes Noble, I got solely because of the cover. This is historical fiction, so I don't know. And that's The Paper Girls of Paris by Jordan Taylor. I have heard really good things about this, uh, but it's not usually one at my alley. I got this for the cover. Ugh. Okay, now, 16-year-old Alice is spending the summer in Paris, but she isn't there for pastries and walks along the set of scenes. Something. When her grandmother passed away, she left Alice and 
mysterious apartment in France that has been locked up for more than 70 years. So I know it goes back and forth between now and the time of Nazis in Paris. So I'm actually pretty excited for this. I think someone suggested we read this for book club next year and I will probably vote for this since I own it. The next book I got because I love the first one so much and that is Heartstopper Volume 2 by Alice Oseman. I read the first one recently. It took me like 45 minutes and I'm so excited to read this one. Maybe I'll read it today and get out of my reading slump but I just love these graphic novels so much. I think there's two more out and I just need them. I just loved the first one so much. It's so soft and so pure and I just I, I love it and I I just need them all. They're great. And the last book that I got, I got at one of my favorite local bookstores and I'm very excited to support them and that is Our Year of Maybe by Rachel Lynn Solomon. I read Today, Tonight, Tomorrow this year by Rachel Lynn Solomon and it was one of my favorite books of the year. I own her first book but this is her second book and I haven't I don't own it, but I just feel like Rachel Lynn Solomon is one of my favorite YA authors now, so I'm so excited to own this. I've heard really good things about this. So yay. Aspiring choreographer Sophie Ornstein would do nothing, whoop, would do anything for Peter Rosenthal Porter, who's been on kidney transplant list as long as she's known him. Peter, a gifted pianist, is everything to Sophie, best friend, musical collaborator, secret crush. When she learns she's a match, donating a kidney is an easy, obvious choice. She can't help wondering if after the transplant, he'll love her back the way she's always wanted. So excited for this. I know that uh, Today, Tonight, Tomorrow was like her first like rom-com, I would say, and her other two books are more hard-hitting. So if I liked Today, Tonight, Tomorrow, I think I'm really gonna like her first two books. So I'm so excited to get into this. I think Rachel and Solomon is gonna be like one of my favorite YA authors. So just so excited. So that is everything that I bought in the last couple of months. Like I said, I'm in a reading slump. So this is a little bit of a smaller haul, which good for my bank account, good for my shelves. <laughs> so thanks for watching my video. See you in my next one. Bye!